Hello and welcome to this Beyond Exploring session and today we are nipping back in time uh, to 1624 to the the most popular play ever ever produced um, or, or at least certainly a scandalous success story a game at chess uh, by Thomas Middleton, which had an almost unprecedented run of nine performances in a row mm -hmm. um, and was hugely successful and well known, had a wonderful publishing history um, and, and is, it was possibly the most famous play of its day and it has sadly disappeared um, uh, from a sort of general public viewing uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the text itself is quite difficult to read because uh, it is a game at chess and all of the characters are represented by chess pieces. Uh, so it means that uh, the reading off the page can be uh, quite tricky. Um, it, uh, it is, I'm going to put this forward as a very serious um, contention here. The plot of a game at chess is all about, and this is controversial, a chess game. Um, if you read any introduction to the text um, in any of the many, many printed editions that there are available, that may not be the first point of focus that, uh, that uh, comes up in, in, uh, in introducing this text to a wider audience. This is something I will talk about later on. So I really want to focus in everybody's minds that this is a chess game. Uh, and therefore gives set designers and costume designers so much opportunity, which is another reason I find it very odd that this play is not done. There are other potential reasons why this play is not done, and they are where we reach trigger warnings. There are uh, scenes or certainly uh, areas of the text uh, dealing with sexual violence. There is, because we are dealing with chess pieces of white and black, uh, potential racial overtones uh, or undertones uh, that need to be addressed and there's one other as well what's the other trigger warning oh yes this is unlike father ted not an ecumenical matter um <laughs> this is a story of uh, religious intolerance you could argue very strongly and so the question we have to answer as part of the next few days reading this is uh, do does the play use these themes and ideas effectively and dramatically and reasonably or does it overstep the bounds of decency. So to discover the answers to these questions, we have a team of chess players, uh, international chess players uh, gathered around the board to, uh, to uh, explore uh, this particular play in no particular order. Uh, reading the part, and this is where the, whether the readers can identify their own parts by the names that I'm about to throw out at them. Uh, reading the part of the white queen's pawn is hi i'm ruth evans um i'm a specialist in medieval english literature and i'm based in st louis missouri in the u.s and reading the part of the black queen's pawn and the fat bishop is alexandra hello um when i'm not hiding from the little monster as present i act professionally and uh, reading the part of the Black Knight's Pawn is... Oh, hi. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> it's me. Hi, um, I'm Veronica. Um, and like my character, I intend to embrace Catholic aesthetics and continue to enrich my pilgrimage through life with one or two spiritually motivated hikes. Ah, we shall we uh, we shall see about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, demonstrating very fitfully there the problems of characters having uh, uh, having not having proper names. Uh, uh, reading the part of the black bishop's pawn is. Hello, I'm Helen Good, and I'm a historian. And reading the part of error, uh, white bishop's pawn, and the black bishop is. Hi, I'm Liz, and I'm in North Devon. And uh, reading The White King's Pawn, the prologue and other additional textual material is... Hi, my name is William Sutton and I'm an actor based here in Amsterdam. And finally, reading the part of Ignatius uh, Loyola and uh, The Black Knight is... Hi, I'm Alan Scott. I'm based in Suffolk and I'm not a professional actor. Excellent. 
And I am your host, Robert Crichton, who is uh, going to be following along and reading appropriate stage directions um, and uh, generally overseeing uh, what is potentially a complicated uh, text. Uh, there are many versions of the text available, so there are potential uh, textual questions to ask and answer as we go along. However, in one of the printings, there is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful woodcut. Uh, in fact, I don't think it's even a woodcut. I think it might be um, a proper engraving, a quite an expensive thing uh, in the printing. Uh, accompanying this is, a, uh, is a, a bit of text, which I'm going to ask William to read now. So uh, the, there's a picture of some chess playing peopleage and uh, the, uh, the, the picture plainly explained after the manner of the chess play. William. A game of chess is here displayed between the black and white house maid, wherein crown thirsting policy for the black house by fallacy to the white knight check often gives and to some straits him thereby drives. The fat black bishop helps also with faithless heart to give the blow. Yet maugre all their craft at length, the white knight, with wit wondrous strength and circumspective prudency, gives checkmate by discovery to the black knight. And so, at last, the game thus won, the black house cast into the bag, and therein shut, find all their plumes and coxcombs cut. Plain dealing thus, by wisdom's guide, defeats the cheats of craft and pride. So that's uh, so that's printed material for a reader at home to look at, giving a sense of what the play is doing, uh, and uh, it's about winning a game at chess. I'm going to keep mm. saying that uh, just just to really make that clear that we're trying to win a game of chess, people. Uh, if you're on the white side, you're trying to win. If you're on the black side, you're trying to win uh, by by uh, hook or by <clears throat> crook. And if you lose and you get your piece taken, you mm. may end up in the bag. So uh, we will now go to what an audience might hear. So the prologue enters the stage. What of the game called chess play can be made to make a stage play shall this day be played? First you shall see the men in order set, states in their poems when both the sides are met, the houses well distinguished. In the game, some men entrapped and taken to their shame, rewarded by their play. And in the close, you shall see checkmate given to virtue's foes. But the fairest jewel that our hopes can deck is so to play our game to avoid your check. And lovely. So we'll move straight on into the inductions. The play opens uh, not only with a prologue, but also an opening gambit uh, before the main action of the play occurs. Uh, so we have error dis <clears throat> discovered asleep on stage and enter Ignatius Loyola. Ah, where? What angle of the world is this that I can neither see the politic face nor with my refined nostrils taste the footsteps of any my disciples, sons and heirs, as well of my designs as institution. I thought they had spread over the world by this time, covered the earth's face and made dark the land like the Egyptian grasshoppers. Here's too much light appears, shot from the eyes of truth and goodness, never yet deflowered. Sure, they were never here. Then is their monarchy unperfect yet? A just reward, I see, for their ingratitude so long to me, their father and their founder. It is not five years since I was sainted by them, where slept mine honour all the time before. Should they be so forgetful to canonise their prosperous institutor? When they had sainted me, they found no room in all their calendar to place my name, that should have removed princes, pulled the most eminent prelates by the roots up, for my dear coming to make way for me, as every petty martyr and saint homily, I talk main and petronel itch and au cures, your abbess Aldergrand and Cunegarde, the widow Marcel, the parson Polycarp, Cecily and Ursula, all take place of me, 
the butt for the bisextile or leap year, and that's but one in three, I fall by chance into the 20, nine and twentieth day of February. There were no room else for me. See their love, their conscience too, to thrust me a lame soldier into leap year. I wrath up and methinks. I could, with the first syllable of my name, blow up their colleges. Up, error, wake, father of superrogation, wise, as Ignatius calls thee, loyaler. Oh, what have you done? Oh, I could sleep in ignorance immortally. The slumber is so pleasing. I saw the bravest setting for a game now that ever mine eye fixed on. What game, prithee? The noblest game of all. A game at chess, betwixt our side and the White House. The men set in their just order, ready to go to it. Were any of my sons placed for the game? Yes, and a daughter too. A secular daughter that plays the Black Queen's pawn, he the Black Bishops. If ever power should show a mastery in thee, let it appear in this. Tis but a dream, a vision, you must think. I care not what. So I behold the children and my cunning, and see what rank they keep. You have your wish. And here music plays. Enter the White House and the Black House, is in the order of the game, most probably. Behold, there's the full number of the game. Kings and their pawns, queens, bishops, knights, and dukes. Dukes? They're called rooks by some. Corruptedly, Le Roc the word, Custode de la Roche, the keeper of the forts, in whom both kings repose much confidence, and for their trust's sake, courage and worth, do well deserve those titles. The answer's high. I see my son and daughter. Mm, those are the two pawns, the black queens and black bishops. Pawns argue but poor spirits and slight performance, nor worthy of the name of my disciples. If I had stood so nigh, I would have cut that bishop's throat, but I'd have had his place, and told the queen a love tale in her ear would make her best pulse dance. There's no elixir, a brain or spirit amongst them. Why, <laughs> would you have them play against themselves? That's quite against the rule of game, Ignatius. Pish, I would rule myself, not observe rule. Why then, you play a game all by yourself. I would do anything to rule alone. It is rare to have the world reigned in by one. See them anon, and mark them in their play. Observe, as in a dance, they glide away. And indeed, they, they all, those who are unnecessary, exit. Oh, with what longings will this breast be tossed, until I see this great game won and lost. And they exit, and we'll just pause there. So... Uh, there may be many questions to ask about uh, who these two characters are and uh, and what's going on, but they do set up, I think, very clearly. Um, you know, this is a game of chess. Here are all the chess pieces. Uh, and uh, and uh, if we start talking about religion, which is a perfectly reasonable starting point, I think, here, uh, without going into uh, too much detail, um, we, uh, we may start getting some clues as to where this is going. Thoughts from the room about what you've just observed? I, I was I quite in... Well, uh, sorry, uh, Alexandra, then Alan. I just said, I wonder how clear all of that would be to a modern audience. You'd get the, the idea that it's a chess game immediately, but the symbolism um, behind it, we probably, most people wouldn't, uh, without, you know, a, a little history lesson instead of the, um, the prologue. Mm -hmm. You know, as to who the Jesuits were and why this is, you know, not only a representation, but a biased representation. And, and so on, because the whole thing hinges on understanding that religious conflict. Uh, do, do we think that get, getting a basic outline of uh, Protestant versus Catholic would be too hard to get across? Um, you know, certainly in terms of visual style, could we, could we get that in here? Uh, Alan, I think, was uh, next up. Well, I, I was going to make a similar point, because effectively you've got Loyola with the Jesuitical thing. 
I'm not sufficient of a historian of the period to actually know how active or feared the Jesuits were at this particular point in time. I, I would have thought they were probably more feared during the Elizabethan rather than the Jacobean period. But um, I'm open to correction on that by someone more knowledgeable. But is the idea that uh, uh, to get that across, I mean, do we need to know details to know that the, 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 their uh, thoughts from the rest of the room? We know that get... there's... Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, then, Liz. Up. We know that there's going to be conflict. We are sitting on the edges of our seats waiting to discover what the conflict is about. So far, I'm not... As an ignorant member of the audience, I'm not upset by this. Hmm. Liz? No, I, well, I agree with Helen. And also, I think anyone going to see a play such as this will probably just do a basic bit of reading up in a prosaic manner what it was about. I don't know. Hmm. Um, I would. <laughs> okay. Uh, any additional thoughts, uh, different or, or, or similar uh, at this early stage? Because, of course, you know, this isn't vital to the rest of the play, I should point out. I mean, uh, I, I, lo I love the way that Ignatius Loyola is presented as complaining about the fact that he doesn't have a feast day yet. Mm. And I think that uh. that's brilliant. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that he's dressed in costume that immediately signals who he is. And I don't think you have to grasp the detail, the Jesuit details necessarily. But... Um, but certainly that the way that he goes on and on about the fact that, well, you're pushing me out so art can only be celebrated in a leap year, I think that's great. <laughs> and I yeah. happen to teach at a Jesuit institution, so I better keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, I think we'll move forward and move into more deeply into uh, what we shall call plot. Um, and the, the much of what we're doing today is made up of relatively small, fairly claustrophobic scenes um, uh, between uh, relatively small numbers of people. So uh, we have quite a meaty chunkette uh, coming up here and uh, I'll look for a convenient place to pause and discuss when we get a sense of where it's going. So enter severally uh, the, uh, the White Queen's Pawn and the Black Queen's Pawn. Two pawns. Whether we have an indication as to whose pawns they are uh, visually, uh, it's quite tricky to do, uh, but I'm sure the dialogue will tell us something important. May, may I ask, uh, is a queen's pawn female? Uh, I'm suspecting that they are both female, yes. Um, but, uh, and effectively work as servants. But let's find out. Let's find out. I ne'er see that face, but my pity rises when I behold so clear a masterpiece of heaven's art wrought out of dust and ashes, and at next thought to give her lost eternally in being not ours, but the daughter of heresy. My soul bleeds at my eyes. Where should truth speak, if not in such a sorrow? Their tears plainly. Beshrew me, if she, not, if she weep not heartily. What is my peace to her to take such pains in? If I wander to loss and with broad eyes yet miss the path she can run blindfold in, throw off on an exercise, why should my oversight, though in the best game that our Christian lost, raise the least spring of pity in her eyes? Is doubtless a great charity, and no virtue could win me surer. Lest things prevail with it, if ever goodness made a gracious promise, it is in yonder look. What little pains would build a fort for virtue to all memory in that sweet creature were the groundwork firmer. It hath been all my glory to be firm in what I have professed. That is the enemy that steals your strength away and fights against you, disarms your soul even in the heat of battle. Your firmness that way makes you more infirm for the right Christian conflict. There I spied a zealous primitive sparkle, but now flew from your devoted eye, able to blow up all the heresies that ever sat in council with your spirit. And here comes he whose sanctimonious breath will make that spark a flame. List to him, virgin, at whose first entrance princes will fall prostrate. Women are weaker vessels. 
And at some point during that speech, there entered the black bishop's pawn. By my penitence, a comely presentation, and the habit to admiration reverend. The heart lady so meek, that as you see good charity pictured still with young ones in her arms, so will he cherish all his young, tractable, sweet, obedient daughters, even in his bosom, in his own dear bosom. I am myself a secular Je Jesuitess, as many ladies are of worth and greatness. A second sort are Jesuits in voto, giving their vow unto the Father General, that's the Black Bishop of our house, whose pawn this gentleman now stands for, to receive the college habit at his holy pleasure. But how are those in voto employed, lady, till they receive the habit? They're not idle. He finds them all true laborers in the work of the universal monarchy, which he and his disciples principally aim at. Those are maintained in many courts and palaces and are induced by noble personages into great prince's services and prove some counselors of state, some secretaries, all serving in notes of intelligence as parish clerks their mortuary bills to the father general. So are designs oft times prevented, and so Im and important secrets of states discovered, yet no author found, but they suspected oft, but they suspected oft that are most sound. This mystery is too deep yet for your entrance, and I offend to set your zeal so back, checked by obedience with desire to hasten your progress to perfection, I commit you to the great worker's hands, to whose grave worth I fit my reverence as to you my wishes does find her subtle supple sorry there's a little there. passage made and uh, just pause there so yes that's a little aside uh, the first thing that the black bishop's pawn says is an aside um and i find that mm. that that uh, really interesting are we um are we uh, you know we, we've got two people talking um, are we following what's going on? Because again, opening gambits. Um, <clears throat> this isn't throwing easy balls at us yet. No. No. Uh, the first few pages, all the words were sensible, but the meaning I completely <laughs> lost. <laughs> mm. Well, I, I, I think to give it a little context, which we're about to find out, is of course that that aside gives us a clue as to how that opening needs to be performed. Um, it's a bit of a con. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the 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 black queen's pawn is uh, is is setting up uh, the white queen's pawn for this this gorgeous hunk of a a, uh, um, a, a bishop's pawn coming in now, um, and uh, and uh, so the question of how that's performed and actually um, the, the vis them talking about someone who's visually there, uh, I think would help as well because it makes it easier to point. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, it's still, it's not, it's not an easy opener, is it? Um, no. it isn't, it's, um, it's, it's not drawing us necessarily in yet. And that's uh, a challenge for a production. Uh, any additional thoughts before we move deeper into this exchange? I think we need, we need more, more meat to, uh, to chew over. So Ooh. the Black Queen's pawn has exited, leaving the Black Bishop's pawn, the Bishop's pawn with the, uh, with the Queen's pawn. Let me contemplate with holy wonder season my access and by degrees approach the sanctuary of unmatched beauty set in grace and goodness. Amongst the daughters of men, I have not found a more catholical aspect. That eye doth promise a single life and meek obedience. Upon those lips, the fresh, sweet, fresh buds of youth. The holy dew of prayer lies like pearl dropped from the opening eyelids of the morn upon the bashful rose. How beauteously a gentle fast not rigorously imposed, would look upon that cheek, and how delightfully the courteous physic of a tender penance 
whose utmost cruelty should not exceed the first fear of a bride to beat down frailty, would work to sound health your long festered judgment and make your merit, which though erring ignorance appears but spotted righteousness to me, far clearer than the innocence of infants. To that good work I bow, and will become obedience humblest daughter, since I find the assistance of a sacred strength to aid me. The labour is as easy to serve virtue the right way, since tis she I ever served in my desire, though I transgressed in judgment. That's easily absolved amongst the rest. You shall not find the virtue that you serve now, a sharp and cruel mistress. Her ears open, to all your supplications. You may boldly and safely let in the most secret sin into her knowledge, which, like vanished man, never returns into the world again. Fate locks up. Fate locks not up, more truly. To the guilty, that may appear some benefit. Who's so innocent that never stands in need on in some kind? If every thought were babbled, that so confessed, the very air we breathe would be unblessed. Now to the work indeed, which is to catch her inclination. That's the special use we make of all our practice in all kingdoms. No, for by discovering their most secret frailties, Things which, once ours, they must not hide from us. That's the first article in the creed we teach them. Finding to what point their blood most inclines, no best to apt them then to our designs. Daughter, the sooner you dispense, burst your errors, the sooner you make haste to your recovery. You must part with them. To be nice or modest towards this good action is to imitate the bashfulness of one conceals an ulcer. For the uncomely parts the tumour vexes till it be past cure. Resolve you thus far, lady. The privatest thought that runs to hide itself in the most secret corner of your heart now must be of my acquaintance so familiarly, never she friend of your night councils nearer. I stand not much in fear of any action, guilty of that black time, most noble holiness. I must confess, as in a sacred temple thronged with an auditory, some come rather to feed on human object than to taste of angels' food. So, in the congregation of quick thoughts, which are more infinite than such assemblies, I cannot with truth safety speak for all. Some have been wanderers, some fond, some sinful. But those found ever but poor entertainment. They had small encouragement to come again. The single life, which strongly I profess now, heaven pardon me, I was about to part from. Then you have passed through love? But left no stain in all my passage, sir, no print of wrong for the most chaste mind that may trace my footsteps. How came you off so clear? I was discharged by an inhuman accident, which modesty forbids, forbids me to put any language to. How you forget yourself! All actions clad in their proper language, though most sordid, my ear is bound by duty to let in and lock up everlastingly. Shall I help you? He was not found to answer his creation. A vestal virgin in a slip of grace could not deliver man's loss modestly. T'was the white bishop's pawn. The same, blessed sir. An heretic, well pickled by base treachery and violence prepared by his competitor, the Black Knight's pawn, whom I shall ever hate for it. T'was of revenges the unmanliest way that ever rival took, 
a villainy that for your sake I'll ne'er absolve him of. I wish it not so heavy. He must feel it. I never yet gave absolution to any crime of that unmanning nature. It seems then you refused him for defect. Therein you stand not pure from the desire that other women have in ends of marriage. Oh, pardon my boldness if I sift your goodness to the last grain. I reverence your pains, sir, and must acknowledge custom to enjoy what other women challenge and possess, more ruled me than desire. For my desires dwell all in ignorance, and I'll never wish to know that fond way may redeem them thence. I never was so taken, beset doubly now with her judgment. What a strength it puts forth. I bring work nearer to you when you have seen a masterpiece of man composed by heaven for a great prince's favour, kingdom's love, so exact envy could not find a place to stick a blot on person or on fame. Have you not, hang on, She's, he's got to start talking to her again. He has, yes. Uh, so uh, from I bring work nearer yeah. to you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go from where I left off. Have you not found ambition swell your wish then and desire stir your blood? By virtue, never. I've only in the dignity of the creature admired the maker's glory. She's impregnable. A second siege must not fall off so tamely. She's one of those must be informed to know a daughter's duty, which some take untaught. Her modesty brings her behind her much. My old means I must fly to. Yes, tis it. And he gives her a book. Please you, peruse this small tract of obedience. Twill help you forward well. Sir, that's a virtue I've ever thought on with a special reverence. You will conceive by that my power, your duty. And we'll just pause there before we have uh, uh, an additional entrance. Are we following the uh, uh, the White Queen's Pawn's tale of woe clearly? Uh, uh, what, what, do, what, what do you think happened to her, or, or shall we say happened to people associated with her? It seems like that, sure. uh, yeah, the Black Queen's, wait a minute, the Black Queen's Paw? No, I'm getting this wrong. This is, Something... this is where trying to discuss people who don't have proper names becomes very difficult to do. <laughs> Somebody clearly wooed her and she repelled them. For I cause. Think. But she repelled them for cause, not because she was virtuous, but because they were, they did something utterly unspeakable. Yes. A, r a rough wooing. Well, there was the white bishop's pawn and then the black knight's pawn who had something to do with it because she said she would ever, ever hate him for it. Um, yes, uh, it's a little more complicated than that, I think. Um, mm. uh, expound, expound. Well, uh, <laughs> I... I I, I, I kind of don't want to. Um, I, I quite like the fact that we're, it, it's, it's uh, just getting across uh, that we are struggling to follow this line of exposition. And I think that's, that's very important. Um, okay. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to you picking up on more clues later on. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be mean and say, yes, yeah, she's, she's not getting married in the morning. Um, <laughs> She's, you know, some great wrong has happened. It's quite complicated. Um, within the context of the scene, obviously, the black bishop is trying, uh, bishop's pawn is trying to, um, um, I'm trying to put this delicately. Um, uh, exactly. Um, and is using his, um, the, the, the coverage of, you know, here is a book, here is, you know, here, I am this great, uh, you know, confess to me, confess to me. It's not flea bag at all. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, series two. Um, so there is, um, there's that narrative of what's happening from, from his point of view, uh, the person who Helen is reading, um, and uh, there's her point of view. So she's not an innocent, 
but she has been has, she has been wrong. Does she? There is an attempt at manipulation going on in this, and we've sort of been thrown into it. Um, she's not an innocent, you say. Mm. Well, she okay. sort of is, and she sort of isn't. Um, okay. Um, I, I, I'm trying not to lead the witnesses too much. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that's what I'm finding difficult, not knowing whether she is this kind of innocent, virtuous woman or somewhat more knowing, and I'm getting both sides, so... Mm. Mm. Well, um, there is a nice says... ambiguity. I, I think we could say she's, she, you know, she is a virgin and she's unmarried, um, but she do doesn't mean she doesn't have desires. I think that's the way I would put it. Mm. And what she says is that she wasn't going to be one for very long, so she was presumably aiming to get married, and then this thing that she can't speak of because it's so embarrassing happened. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, I, I mean, I will support you in not leading the witnesses, um, but there are references to uh, unmanly and unmanning um, mm -hmm. things. There, yes. there, are, there are references to that word they, that, that keep coming back in regard to what happened mm. that's preventing her from getting marriage, married. Yes. I think the, un, the, un, the unmanning uh, 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 actions there are, are very important. Um, and as, as you've quoted that in the text... Ouch! Um, <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I could, couldn't possibly comment at this stage. And it's an interesting question. Is the audience supposed to follow precisely what's happened, apart from just simply it's been a bit traumatic and she's currently single? Um, you know, how much data is the audience expected to know? I think that words like that and, and ways, of, you know, particular ways of expressing certain things would have been understood as a euphemism always to mean that or the other thing. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? It, it, I can't think of, a, of another example, but I know that there are others where, you know, if someone uses this phrase, what they mean is always this other thing, which mm. must be referenced euphemistically for either religious or, or modesty reasons. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I, I think we can quote the Black Bishop's pawn uh, to be a little more explicit. Uh, when he, he, very, he says, shall I help you yeah. uh, explain these things? He was not found to answer his creation. A vestal virgin in a slip of grace could not deliver man's loss modestly. Um, mm. <clears throat> so, um, yes, the, uh, there's, um, there's a loss. Mm. There's a loss there. Um, but uh, it's too embarrassing to talk about. I, I think it's fair enough. It's fair <laughs> enough. Uh, we will come to this more explicitly later. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm reveling in our confusion. It's great. Um, sometimes having a very clear narrative is, uh, is, is just too easy. Just too easy. Uh, okay, so the scene continues. We've got more comings and goings. So the scene sort of doesn't end, but we just have a sort of movement of characters in and out. So they're having this little intimate um, discussion. Um, and then enter unto them the white bishop's pawn so a white piece uh, who's uh, uh, associated with the, with the white sides clergy the knowledge will be precious of both sir what makes young tr yon troubler of all christian waters so near that blessed spring but that i know her goodness is the rock from whence it issues unmovable as fate twould more afflict me than all my sufferings for her which so long as she holds constant to the house she comes of the whiteness of the cause, the side, the quality, are sacrifices to her worth and virtue. And though confined in my religious joys, I'd marry her and possess her. And enter the Black Knight's pawn. Behold, lady, two inhuman enemies, the Black Knight's pawn and the White Bishops, the Gelder and the Gelded. There's my grief, my hate. What in the Jesuit's fingers? By this hand I'll give my part now for a parrot's feather. She'll never return virtuous. Tis impossible. I'll undertake more wages will be laid upon a usurer's return from hell than upon hers from him now. Have been guilty of such base malice that my very conscience shakes at the memory of it. 
and when I look to gather fruit, find nothing but the savin tree, too frequent in nuns' orchards, and they're planted by all conjecture to destroy fruit, rather. I'll be resolved now. Most noble virgin. Ignoble villain! Dare that unhallowed tongue lay hold upon a sound so gracious. What's noblest to thee, or virgin chastity? Then out of thy acquaintance. Talk of violence that shames creation. Deeds would make night blush. That's company for thee. Hast thou the impudence to court me with a leprosy upon thee, able to infect the walls of a great building? Son of offence, forbear. Go set your evil before your eyes. A penitential vesture would better become you, some shirt of hair. And you a three pound smock stead of an alb? At the scene caseable, this holy felon robs safe and close. I feel a sting that's worse too. White pawn has so much charity to accept a reconcilement. Make thine own conditions, for I begin to be extremely burdened. No truth or peace of that black house protested is to be trusted. But for hope of quittance, and warned by diffidence, I may entrap him soonest. I admit conference. It's a nobleness that makes confusion cleave to all my merits. And so exit the white bishop's pawn and the black knight's pawn, who was speaking <laughs> just there. Uh, it should be a chasuble rather than a caseable there. The shoot, there's a missing H there. Um, so lots of things oh. there. Um, it's, it's getting complicated. And I think the absence of visuals is not helping. Um, but we're starting to pull things together. Alexandra's hand is raised. I have a point and it's an important one. I hmm. think helen that you took a line that was actually someone else's and i think uh -huh. that would have if we if we swap that back that would make more sense mm. because um there's a little speech so the white queen pawn says there's my grief my hate ah Once the black yes it's the black knight's pawn you see this is black why has, nobody can has, read this uh, play yes yeah, so, so, the, so, yeah. so, so the next line is the black knight's pawn which would be veronica yeah I, sorry, I, I, I'm not. So, so the bishop. <clears throat> you you read the Black Knight's part rather than the Black Bishop's pawn's part. Oh, what? I did. I. Yeah. Well, as well. well as, I, I, so. I I beg its pardon. Yeah, the the <laughs> it, and it, it it does make a it makes a very different interpretation of what's going on in that scene because uh, that that does make a huge difference. Is, is this is this my error or or or? Uh, or the text. It, it, I'm afraid it is yours. Uh, the, te oh, the text. Oh, sorry. I, I, uh, I, I didn't see it either. No, this is I, the problem with this text. You see. I, um, I deeply apologise. No, um, because it makes it's the black knight who approaches the white queen's pawn and goes most noble virgin, and she tells him to f off very very quickly. Um, ah. uh, she's not telling and the, also the... that speech is about I've been guilty of malice and I've done a very bad thing um, and he's basically revealing sort of or directing us towards the bad thing that happened well I mean we, to, to some degree the Black Bishop's Pawn has explicitly told us who these mm. two people are there's right. um, you know the, we've... the Gelder and the Gelded yeah, yeah so we've got the, the her love interest who's um, mm. absent of um, some particulars um, <laughs> and the person who did it um, and um, and the, there's an awful lot of um, shall we say attention is being pushed onto the White Queen's Pawn throughout this play um so she she's very much a focus of that um so um uh yeah so the black knight's pawn is is i mean he's not exactly repentant is he no 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 he's just saying i got him out of the way and hi hi oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, i like that line i'll give my part now for a parrot's feather mm. not really sure what it means but um, that's, that's the Black Knight's pawn right there. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, oh, I've got that as Black Bishop's pawn. I've got Black Knight's pawn here. Mm. Where, where are we? Um, oh, I see what's what happening. It's fingers? a game of chess, Alan. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've, I know exactly what I've done. It's, it's 
I've been cutting and pasting the highlighting. Ah. And I've done it onto the wrong guy. So mm. mine says Black Bishop's Pawn, but that's me. Ah. You see, this, I, this, this is the formatting yeah. perils of this play. Um, um, but yes, so... Um, Oh, well, it's that... a bet, isn't it? Uh, I'd give uh, my part now for a pe uh, parrot's Got feather. She, yeah. She'll never return to being virtuous. Exactly. You know, it's, yeah. like, um, it, it's like, yeah. Because um, he obviously is not paying attention to who she is. Because um, uh, obviously he's been rejected by her many, many times, um, I suspect, in the past. Um, and Just... now he hasn't got it. Uh, anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> In that, in the Black Knight's pawns aside, mm. uh, does anyone know what a savin tree is? Uh, no, but I can find out. Um, a motif in um, certainly in medieval manuscripts that shows n that sh is a penis tree that nuns pluck the penises off, and I'm just yeah wondering. yeah I think that's exactly um, what we're going with yeah. That, is that the reference there? Oh, okay, mm. I've not come across the savin tree, but this is a reference to castration. So. Oh, yes, yes, he's the castrator. Um. It's a juniper tree. Is it? Oh. It's uh, to give birth under the savin tree is to have a miscarriage or an abortion. Oh. Oh. A, a, a savin tree, the footnote I've got here, is a bush that does not produce edible fruit, uh, but was used to induce miscarriages of unwanted pregnancies. Right. Which, 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 which then adds a further loop with the following line about too frequent in nuns' mm. orchards. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so... I, I apologise for Black Knight's Paul. That's a much better speech than... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well we'll, well, we'll 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 take it as 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 read uh, as as whoever read it. It doesn't matter. Um, I think we've passed it a few times now, so we've uh, we've got a sense of what's going on with that interpersonal relations. Um, uh, there's a little hint of the the wider game is mentioned as well, um, um, because the white bishop's pawn. Though it's this white pawn. Um, uh, I may entrap him soonest. Um, I'm not sure what's there, but there was a mention of the game earlier, and I can't remember where it was. Um, I have lost it, uh, but never mind. Um, I'm sure additional things are going to be happening in, in, in what's happening next. I think entrap actually turned up in the pre-introit. No, something quite recently, but I've, I've, I've lost it. So let's worry not about it. Let's move forward and see what, what occurs. So um, the, the, the white, this white pawn has exited, uh, as has the, uh, the black knight's pawn. Um, and so at this point, we have enter of entrance of the black knight. Um, and... Um, uh, the the uh... oh yes, this is all very confusing. So the white bishop's pawn and black knight's pawn have exited. Uh, the black bishop's pawn and the white queen's pawn have moved to one side. You see, this 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 is this is the problem. This is the problem. It's very difficult to talk about this play. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a little scene here with the black bishop's pawn, uh, who's been working working his uh, um, who's talking to the white queen's pawn. And then the Black Knight has a lengthy aside. So let's hear from the Black Knight and the, mm. uh, after the Black Bishop's pawn. This tr that treatise will instruct you thoroughly. So, so. The business of the universal monarchy goes forward well now. The great college pot that should always be boiling with the fuel of all intelligence possible through, through the Christian kingdoms. Is this fellow our prime incendiary? And one of those who promised the White Kingdom seven years since? Out to our Black House? Put a new daughter to him. The great work stands. He minds nor monarchy, nor hierarchy, diviner principality. I'd have bragged less, but have done more than all the conclave on them. Take their assistant fathers in all parts. 
yea, and their father general in to boot. And what I've done, I've done facetiously, with pleasant subtlety and bewitching courtship, abused all my believers with delight. They took a comfort to be cousined by me, to many a soul I've let in mortal poison, whose cheeks have cracked with laughter to receive it. I could so roll my pills in sugared syllables, and strew such kindly mirth o'er all my mischief, they took it their bane in way of recreation. As pleasure steals corruption into youth, he spies me now, I must uphold his reverence, especially in public, though I know. Priapus, guardian of the cherry orchards, Bacchus and Venus Chet, is not more vicious. Blessings accumulation keep with you, sir. Honours dissimulation be your due, sir. Uh, how deep in duty his observance plunges, his charge must needs be irreverent. I am confessor to this black knight too. You see, devotion's fruitful. She hath many sons and daughters. I do this the more to amaze our adversaries to behold the reverence we give these quittance, and to beget a sound opinion of holiness in them and zeal in us, as also to invite the like obedience in other pieces by a meek example. And the White Queen's Pawn exits here. So, is your trifle vanished? Trifle, call you her. Tis a good pawn, sir. Sure, she's the second pawn in the White House. And to the opening of the game, I hold her. Aye, you hold well for that. I know your play of old. If there were more Queen's pawns, you ply the game a great deal harder. Now, sir, we're in private. But what for the great work, the main existence, the hope monarchal? It goes on in this. In this? I cannot see it. You may deny so a dial's motion, because you cannot <laughs> see the hands move or the wind that rends the cedar. Where stops the current of intelligence? Your father general, bishop of the black house, complains for lack want of work. Here's from all parts sufficient to employ him. I received a packet from the assistant fathers lately. And he gives him some letters. Look, there is Anglica and Galicia. Aye, marry, sir. There's some quick flesh in this. Germanica. And we can assume that lots of letters are being given over this dialogue. I think they've sealed this with butter. This Italica. They put their pens the Hebrew way, methinks. Hispanica here. Hispanica? Blind work tis. The Jesuit has writ this with the juice of lemon, sure. It must be held close to the fire of purgatory, ere it can be read. You would not lose your jest, knight, though it wounded your own fame. Caranda Fiacuna. Take heed, sir, we're entrapped. The White King's pawn. And indeed, the White King's pawn has entered. He's made our own man. Half in voto yours, his heart's in the black house. Leave him to me. And exit the black knight. Uh, black bishop's no, yeah. pawn. Sorry, black bishop's oh, yeah. pawn. Yeah. Most of all, friends and dear, previously special. You see my outside, but you know my heart, knight. Great difference in the colour. There's some intelligence. And as more ripens, so your knowledge still shall prove the richer. There shall nothing happen, believe it, to extenuate your cause or to oppress her friends but I will strive to cross it with my counsel, purse, and power. Keep all supplies back, both in means and men, that may raise strength against you. We must part. I dare no longer of this theme discuss. The ear of state is quick and jellious. Excellent estimation. Thou art valued above the fleet of gold that came short home. And the White King's pawn exits. Poor Jesuit-ridden soul, how art thou fooled? Out of thy faith, from thy allegiance drawn, which way soever thou takest, thou art a lost pawn. 
And the scene ends, and we have the stirrings of plot. Um, we have a turncoat pawn. We have a spy in the white, the white ranks working for the Black Knight. Um, we've got the sense that uh, possibly what's happening with the, the wooing sort of of the White Queen's pawn is partly political. There might be something going on there. It might just be for uh, the the Black Bishop's Pawn's own personal amusement um, uh, as well. Um, there is a, the hints of a wider game being played. Are we feeling slightly on more steady ground? Mm. Mm. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get my head around this. <laughs> mm. I, I think the, the absence of a physical dimension is really not helping him. Um, mm. I, I, also, I also think, to be fair, it is not delivering exposition brilliantly. Um, it it, it is, seems to be deliberately hiding what it's saying from us. Um, and I wonder if that's deliberate or not, and just over-egging the pudding. Um, well, the business of the letters really confused me, because that seems to be some reference to political intrigue, because I presume that that Anglica, Gallica, Germanica seem to be references to um, handwriting, perhaps, that they're describing handwriting because the reference to they've put their pens the Hebrew way, me thinks. And that's a Jewish reference. But I they, think it's the spies from around the world, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's like bringing in to France, Germany and Italy. Yeah. Mm. And this is the thing that I was talking about at the beginning about, you know, they're, they're presuming knowledge, the writer is presuming knowledge that indeed the audience at the time probably would have had but that we don't yeah. uh, there's a lot of references to uh, the universal monarchy and um, this idea of a, of a great catholic conspiracy to take over the world um, and you know they, they keep presenting the jesuits as though everybody knows that they're spies and that they're conspirators and and so on and so forth yeah. mm. which we as as a modern reader or, or, or listener um, would need a lot more signposting of. Mm. Is that a question? Can we reframe this as the Cold War and do it like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy or something? Um, mm. You know, I'm looking that's, for analogues here. Yeah, that um, sounds a good one. Um, you know, we don't have to say that the text has to remain in 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 completion. I, I feel cuts coming on, um, but also that you know, there's no particular reason why we can't change things. I I, I, I have no compunction. Thomas Middleton's been dead a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> the, the handwriting are, are, that they're talking about, I'm assuming that the English, French and Germans are writing in secretary hand and the Italians are writing in Italian hand. I, I would like to venture a theory that the code, that they're different, encoded in different ways. Yeah. So Hebrew would be, would be written backwards. Right. Um, <laughs> And also in a different kind of character, and uh, the the reference to lemon juice to rotate yeah. with the lemon invisible juice, ink. Uh, that's invisible ink. Yeah. Yeah. Held, that would be yeah transparent. Yeah, and you have to hold it to the fire of purgatory um, mm -hmm. so you can read it because that will bring the writing up. Um, so yeah, mm. spycraft, spycraft. This is all spy about craft. spies. Mm. Yeah. Um, so um, you know, maybe we found our route in. Maybe not. Who knows? Let's see whether it will hold weight as we move into Act Two. So, uh, we meet again characters who we've have have been very much the centre of the action. We have the White Queen's pawn and the Black Bishop's pawn once again. So, where is this scene going? And it's pretty much a two-hander for a very very long time. So, we haven't been introduced to too many characters, which does at least make it slightly. Mm. less hopefully confusing for an audience if we can deliver payloads of information at least of what characters are doing um and you know we're now hopefully into more open waters we know the white queen's pawn has a complicated love backstory and the black bishop's pawn is a bit of a wrong one um <laughs> so let us go into act two enter the white queen's pawn with the book we had earlier and uh, and to her the black bishop's pawn and here again, it is the daughter's duty to obey her confessor's command in all things, without exception or expostulation. It's the most general rule that e'er I read of. 
Yet when I think how boundless virtue is, goodness and grace, it is gently reconciled. And then it appears well to have the power of the dispenser as uncircumscribed. She's hard upon it. Twas the most modest key that I could use to open my intents. What little or no pains goes to some people. Ah, what have we here? A sealed note. Whence is this? To the black bishop's pawn, these? How to me? Strange, who subscribes it? The black knight, the black king. What would he? Pawn, sufficiently holy, but unmeasurably politic. We had late intelligence from our most industrious servant, famous in all parts of Europe, our knight of the Black House, that you have at this instant in chase the White Queen's pawn, and very likely by the carriage of your game to entrap and take her. These are therefore to require you, by the burning affection I bear to the rape of devotion, that speedily, upon the surprisal of her, by all the watchful advantage you make some attempt upon the White Queen's person, whose fall or prostitution our lust most violently rages for. Sir, after my desire hath took a julep for its own inflammation, yet scorches me, I shall have cooler time to think of yours shath pass the general rule the large extent of our prescriptions for obedience and yet with what anacrity of soul her eyes move to the letters holy sir too long i've missed you oh your absence starves me hasten for time's redemption worthy sir lay your commands as thick and fast upon me as you can speak them how i thirst to hear them Set me to work upon this spacious virtue, which the poor span of life's too narrow for, boundless obedience. The humblest, yet the mightiest of all duties, well here set down a universal goodness. By holiness of garment, her safe innocence hath frighted the full meaning from itself. She's further off from understanding now the language of my intent than at first meeting. For virtue's sake, good sir, command me something. Make trial of my duty in some small service, and as you find the faith of my obedience there, then trust it with a greater. You speak sweetly. I do command you first, then. With what joy I do prepare my duty. To meet me with a seal, a kiss of love upon my lips. Ha! Huh. At first, disobedient. In so little too, how shall I trust you with a greater then, which was your own request? Pray, send not back my innocence to wound me. Be more courteous. I must confess, much like an ignorant plaintiff, who presuming on the fair path of his meaning goes rashly on, till on a sudden brought into the wilderness of law by words dropped unadvisedly, hurts his good cause and gives his adversary advantage by it. Apply, if you can best, sir. If my obedience and your command can find no better way, fond men command and wantons best obey. If I can, at that distance, send you a blessing, is it not nearer to you in mine arms? It flies from these lips, dealt abroad in parcels, and I, to honour thee above all daughters, invite thee home to the house, where thou mayst surfeit on that which others miserably pine for, a favour which the daughters of great potentates would look of envy's colour but to hear. Good men may err sometimes. You're mistaken, sure, if this be virtue's path, tis a most strange one. I never came this way before. That's your ignorance. And therefore shall that idiot still conduct you that knows no way but one, nor ever seeks it. 
If there be twenty ways to some poor village, tis strange that virtue should put, be put to one. Your fear is wondrous faulty. Cast it from you. T'will gather else in time a disobedience too stubborn for my pardon. Have I locked myself as unawares into sin's servitude with more desire of goodness? Is this the top of all strict order, and the holiest of all societies, the three vowed people for poverty, obedience, chastity, and the last, the most forgot? When a virgin's ruined, I see the great work of obedience is better than half finished. What a stranger are you to duty grown? What distance keep you? Must I bid you come forward to a happiness yourself should sue for? "'Twas ne'er so with me. I dared not let this stubbornness be known. "'Twould bring such fierce hate on you. "'Yet presume not to make that courteous care a privilege for willful disobedience. "'It turns then into the blackness of a curse upon you. "'Come, come, be nearer.' "'Nearer?' "'Was that scorn?' I would not have it proved so, for the hopes of the grand monarchy, if it were like it, let it not dare stir abroad again, a stronger ill will coped with it. Bless me, threatens me, and quite dismays the good strength that should help me. I never was so doubtful of my safety. Twas but my jealousy, forgive me, sweetness. Yours is the house of meekness, and no venom lives under that roof. But nearer, why so fearful? No, nearer the altar, the more safe and sacred. But nearer to the offerer, oft more wicked. A plain and most insufferable contempt. My glory I have lost upon this woman in freely offering her that she should have kneeled a year in vain for. My respect is darkened. Give me my reverence again thou robs me of in thy repulse. Thou shalt not carry it hence. Sir? Thou art too great a winner to depart, and I too deep a loser to give way to it. Oh, heaven! Lay me down, reputation, before thy stirrest, thy nice virginity is re thy nice virginity is recompensed too little for my love. Tis well if I accept of that for both. Thy loss is but thine own. There's art to help thee, and fools to pass thee to. In my discovery the whole society suffers, and in that the hope of absolute monarchy is eclipsed. Assurance canst thou make none for thy secrecy, but by thy honour's loss that act must all be. Oh, my distressed condition! Dost thou weep? If thou hadst any pity, this necessity would wring it from thee. I must else destroy thee. We must not trust the policy of Europe upon a woman's tongue. Then take my life, sir, and leave mine honour for my guide to heaven. Take heed, I take not both, which I have vowed if longer thou resist me. Help, oh help! Art thou so cruel for an honour's bubble to undo a whole fraternity? and disperse the secret of most princes locked in us. For heaven and virtue's sake! Must force confound! Noise within. Ha! What's that? Silence, if fair worth be in thee. I'll venture my escape upon all dangers now. Who comes to take me? Let me see that pawn's face or his proud, timpanous master, swelled with state wind, which once being pricked in the convocation house, the corrupt air puffs out, and he falls shriveled. I oh, hang on, who's... Sorry. Yeah. I think that's... that. that, that uh, yeah, that's right. That's you, that's you, that's fine. Yeah. Again? Yeah. Uh, no, no, you did, you did. Next is uh, White Queen's uh, pawn. Uh. 
I will discover thee, art hypocrite, to all the kindreds of the earth. And she exits, and there we wow. take a bit of an in breath. Um, so, uh, if anyone wants uh, an exposition of the abuse of the clergy, um, this <coughs> is um, uh, this is one of them. Um, and the way this scene progresses and gets nastier and nastier and more um, dangerous as it goes, and the the also you know come nearer the altar come near me come near me yeah, um yeah. Mm, yeah. and that he talks it into you know well i've gone this far i have to dishonor you mm. uh you know it, it's not enough for you to just uh, say no and go i i, I have to because otherwise i can't i can't blackmail you into silence i, I um, really wish i'd read this in, ahead mm. it's uh, yeah it's it's it it's it's a dark. It's a it is a very very dark scene, um, yeah. and it's you know. I mean, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, this is this is where the the where, and where precisely the injunction for this comes from because it's not quite what the letter says at the beginning for him to do. No. Um, this isn't this isn't an order from on high. Oh. Uh, mm. This is just something that he is doing uh, because he has some power. Um, I, I get the impression that it's standard operating procedure. Mm. That this is this is the way he he does it to all his female converts. Well, uh, you will f you will find that there might be um, uh, uh, exposition as to the mechanics of how this uh, this is organised and and run uh, later on in the play, um, but uh, I won't go ahead get ahead in that sense. Um, additional thoughts as to where we are. The the letter was from from who was the letter the from Black King? The, yeah, the Black King saying yeah. to keep her for him. Was that what he was saying? Um, uh, I think it's about you've got to entrap her. Um, so he's saying you've got to take her. Yeah, yeah, you've That's got to you've right, got okay. to take her for your side. Uh, you've okay. got to turn her. Um, okay. So blackmail is part of what this is about. This is a part about create, gaining access to the White Queen, so you can take her as part of the chess game. Right. Um, but you know, it doesn't say precisely. You know, if we're using cold word, what uh, you know, uh, terminology. Mm. You know, how do you burn the um, uh, the mark. How do you how do you turn them? Um, and this is this is the uh, this is one of the options. Well, he Good. does say the rape of devotion, mm, mm. which he seems to take quite literally. Mm. Mm. The yes, man's and, a pig. And, He's a pig. And oh, yeah. then he's supposed to go on and make some attempt upon the White Queen's person. Yes, mm. yes, or at least gain access to. I mean, it it seems to be that the. Um, Make some attempt upon her, yes. Um, so again, it's 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 ev everyone you can get at, um, for p in part political reasoning. Hey ho. Mm. I mean, I found Whoa. the character. Oh, Veronica, Veronica. Sorry, um, I found the character development kind of interesting. Um, I mean the subtleties were probably there but in the beginning to me at least he seemed more of like a um protestant view of a catholic caricature in terms of um the way that i guess they contemplate sin and um the state of confession but uh but now obviously it, it's, it's, it's much more devilish mm. um his character like pure evil rather than um, more, more of a, a fool in his, in his views. But that still fits, the, well, not the caricature, but the exaggeration mm. of the way in which Catholicism is presented yeah. under, <clears throat> uh, you know, for political purposes, obviously. Yeah, mm. yeah. <clears throat> But also, I was going to say, you know, you were talking about how do you how do you do this in a contemporary context, and how do you make this play kind of relevant right now? This scene, tell, hmm? because it's 
Sorry, I, so, I just uh, said how I, do you, in, in, <clears throat> I was just saying in reference to Robert, your your earlier question about how do you present this in a contemporary on a contemporary stage and how do you make it relevant in a contemporary context? And I said this scene is how. Yeah. 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 Because um, and and you know for two reasons: one, because of the the heinous uh, uh, attempt that the bishops pawn is making you know on its own and secondly because he's a bishop spawn and he's clearly a priest character and you know if you want to talk about um uh, or not to talk about if you want to um hint towards scandals in recent times that's something that an audience will immediately recognize and mm. have opinion mm. very strong opinions about mm. yes absolutely um, I could see bringing this up in a contemporary scene, something to do with, I don't know, European sex trafficking or something like that, you know, if you wanted to give it a more of a, more of a feel for what's going on. I mean, in, but, a, sen in a sense, it's dealing with so many intersecting mm -hmm. um, issues, actually, once we hit this scene um, and, you know, the plot actually starts kicking in. Um, it, it, you, we suddenly get scenes where, where context is, is less important in that sense. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's, Alan, then Helen. Uh, it, it just strikes me. It's, it's the almost eternal story of power and the abuse thereof. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that there are analogies in one of the uh, Canterbury Tales for a priest behaving badly. I think most of medieval literature. Plenty, uh, <laughs> Plenty of them, yeah. Yeah. Helen. One of the things that slightly worries me is the letter. Mm. I mean, let us cast down a letter which is actually to him, which gives away so much information, which would be totally, I mean, so dangerous if it fell into the wrong hands. Mm. Yet to become stumbled upon by chance, you know, it, it does seem to me to be um, a little strange as a plot device. We will see some more mechanics of letters, I think, later on. So we'll we may be able to make a better judgment of that as we go. It is of the way he discovers it, um, and mm. I wonder if there's a disingenuousness to that line. Um, anyway, the scene isn't over. I should point out we still have <laughs> we still have more to go, and in a sense, what comes next is perhaps more disturbing. Um, oh, uh, let's. <laughs> Let's see in a different in a different way. Um, so we've had the noise without, um, as the White Queen's pawn has made her escape. Um, who is it who responded to the noise? It's the Black Queen's pawn. So Black Queen pawns enters. Sorry, are we not going from the line before that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. The noise uh, within, isn't it? I, oh, sorry. I thought. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Confusion. Is that voice rings the alarm of my undoing? How? Which way escaped she from me? Yes, Are you it. mad? Can lust infatuate a man so hopeful? No patience in your blood. The dog star reigns, sure. Time and fair temper would have wrought her pliant. I, sp I spied a paw near the White House walk near us and made that noise on purpose to give warning. For my no turn, which enders all I work for. Methinks I stand over a powder vault and the match now a kindling. What's to be done? Ask the black bishop's counsel, you're his pawn. Tis his own case. He will defend you mainly. And happily, here he comes with the black knight too. And so enters the black bishop and the black knight. Yeah. Oh, you've made noble work for the White House yonder. This act will fill the adversary's mouth and blow the Lutheran's cheeks till they crack a, a, till they crack again. This will advance the great monarchal business in all parts well and help the ancients forward. What I in seven years laboured to accomplish, one minute set back by some Codby's college still. I dwell not, sir, alone in this default. The black house yields me partners. All more courtless. Court, cast, that's my motto ever. I travelled with that word over most kingdoms, and lain safe with all nations of a leaking bottom. I've been as oft tossed on Venus seas as trimmer, fresher ves vessels, when sounder barks have lain at anchor, that is, 
kept the door. She has no witness then? None, none. Gross. Witness? When man, when man to man of his society to mischief with a witness. I have done it then. Away upon the wings of speed, take post course, cast thirty leagues of earth behind thee suddenly. Leave letters antedated with our house ten days at least from this. Bishop, I taste thee. Good, strong episcopal counsel, take a bottle on it, to serve thee all thy journey. But good sir, how for my getting forth unspied? There's check again. Now I'll help that. Well said, my bouncing Jesuitess. There lies a secret vault. Away, make haste then. Run for my cabinet of intelligences, for fear they search the house. And the bishop's, uh, uh, the black uh, queen's pawn uh, exits. Oh, good bishop, burn them rather. I cannot stand to pick them now. Be gone, the danger's all in you. So as they burn the letters, uh, exit the black bishop's pawn, uh, re-enter the black queen's pawn with cabinet. Let me see, Queen's Pawn, how formally hath packed up his intelligences, hath laid them all in truckle beds, methinks, and, like court harbingers, hath writ their names in chalk upon their chambers. Anglica, oh, this is the English house. What news there, Trow? Ha, by this light, most of these are bawdy epistles. Time they were burnt indeed, whole bundles of them. Here's from his daughter Blanche and their daughter Bridget, from their safe sanctuary in the White Friars. These from two tender sisters of compassion in the bowels of Bloomsbury. These are for the nunnery in Drury Lane. A fire, a fire, good Jesuitess, a fire! What have you there? A note, sir, of state policy and an exceeding safe one. Pray, let's see it, sir to sell away all the powder in the kingdom, to prevent blowing up. They're safe, I'll label it. Here's a facetious observation now, and fits my humour better. He writes here, some wives in England will commit adultery, and then send to Rome for a bull for their husbands. Have they those ships? Oh, there's no female breathing sweeter and subtler. Here, wench, take these papers, scorch me em soundly, Burn them to a French russet and put them in again. Why? What's your mystery? Oh, sir, twill mock the adversary strangely, if e'er the house be searched. Twill stand in Venice, upon a Jesuitical expulse there, when the inquisitors came all spectacled to pick out syllables out of the dung of treason, mm. as children pick out cherry stones, yet found none but what they made themselves with ends of letters. Do as I bid you, pawn. Exit the Black Knight and Black Bishop. Fear not. In all I love too, I love roguery too well to let it fall. And enter the Black Knight's pawn. How now? What news with you? The sting of conscience afflicts me so for that inhuman violence on the White Bishop's pawn. It takes away my joy, my rest. This tis to make a eunuch. You made a sport on to then. Cease aggravation. I come to be absorbed fort. Where's my confessor? Why dost thou point to the ground? Because he went that way. <laughs> What's that? Come, help me in with this cabinet, and after I have singed these papers through thee, I'll tell thee a strange story. If be sad, tis welcome. Tis not troubled with much mirth, sir. <laughs> So, as they decide which documents to shred, um, and we discuss their, uh, Helen raising the point earlier of their document management, um, they're, 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 in a sense they're very well organised, but also they're a bit ramshackle. Um, some of them don't know precisely the best way to burn papers, you've got to make sure you get all of it, you don't leave any letters lying around. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the joke about going to hell when you've got literally something probably burning right down at your feet um, is, is, a, a, is mm. a very nice uh, nice bit of word play. Um, but then you've got the, the darkness of the scene that the, um, the Black Queen's pawn was basically standing outside being playing lookout and just going, will you cock that up? 
um, that she's <laughs> in many ways complicit with what's going on there um, on some way. Maybe not precisely as to what he was uh, doing there, but everyone's going, not you idiot, what, what, were you, what were you doing, you monster? They're going, oh, you amateur, there were witnesses. Ooh. I mean, the yeah. corruption that that's suggesting and the venality of these characters um, is, you know, very, very, very um, strongly put across there. Um, thoughts, thoughts. Um, was, there, was there something about backdating letters and falsifying also that was yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anti-dating. Yeah. Mm. Anti-dating mm. stuff so that they could... Uh, Ten days. <laughs> back yeah. up an argument. Mm. in their favor yeah um and uh, yeah uh, that 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 sense of creating your own alibis as well you know that kind of thing right um, yeah i was in rome okay. honest look uh, it says on the this letter that i wrote um uh, you know the games that you could play and just talking generally about the venality of the characters the black knight you know referring to the fact that he's obviously an older man but yet he likes sex you know mm. as i've often been as i've been as often tossed on Venus seas as trimmer, fresher vessels. So it's really reinforcing the idea of the venality of all of these characters. Mm. Mm. Yes, um, and that they're all as a you know they're all guilty of abuse on some level, uh, not just covering up, but you know that they they do it themselves. And it's just that the crime committed here is on their eyes is that the black bishop's pawn's not very good at it. Um, you know, he didn't make sure that he would get away with it. And now everyone has, is, is discommoded, as it were, because everybody else has to do all this burning of letters and covering up of, um, and, and hiding the, uh, the Black Bishop's pawn, um, you know, moving him on to the next parish, as is traditional. Um, <laughs> yes, I must say, I was thinking about that, that film, Insight, the, the, the one about the Boston mm. Globe. Mm. That's that's what that's mm. the resonance that immediately leapt to me is that you know they've spotlight. got a system. <laughs> spotlight. That's mm. right. Yes. Inside. Spotlight. spotlight. Yeah. Mm. Um. Uh, I just because we're going to head into extra time very quickly. We've got uh, the beginning of the next scene. I want to go into because we've got another character I want to introduce before everything gets really fiddly, and I don't want to get behind. Uh, so I want to just move into Act Two, Scene Two because we, we get another two-person scene, pretty much, for, for a little chunkette, or, or a series of two-person uh, scenes, uh, as we're introduced to the fat bishop, <laughs> and the, thank God we got an, a, a name we can latch on to. Um, <laughs> the fat bishop and the fat bishop's pawn. So. The fat bishop is, in fact, black. Is yes, right? he's, a, he's a black well, piece. He's the other black right now. Uh, yes. Well, this is the thing. The p pieces pieces change sides. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, yes, Fat Bishop the, and the, his pawn. The... Pawn. You have a pawn. Do, have... Do I have a Fat Bishop? I attended pawn? your Great Holiness service. T terrible oversight. Um, for great. I thank you, but for greatly holy, there the soil alters. Fat cathedral bodies have very often but lean little souls. Much like the lady in the lobster's head, a great deal of shell and garbage of all colours, but the pure part that should take wind, wings and mount is at last gasp. As if a man should gape and from his huge bulk let forth a butterfly like those big-bellied mountains which the poet delivers that are brought to bed with mouse flesh. Are my books printed, Pawn, my last invective against the Black House? Ready for publication, for I saw perfect books this morning, sir. Fetch me a few, which I will instantly distribute amongst the White House. With all speed, sir. Add exit his pawn. Tis a most lordly life to rail at ease, sit, dr eat, and drink upon the fat of one kingdom, and rail upon another with the juice on it. I've writ this book out of the strength and marrow of six and thirty dishes at a meal, but most aren't out of colours of cock sparrows. Twill stick and glue the faster to the adversary, twill slit the th throat of their most polished cause. And yet I ate but little butcher's meat in the conception. 
of all things, I commend the White House best for plenty and variety of victuals. When I was one of the black side professed, my flesh fell half a cubit. Time to turn when mine own ribs revolted. <laughs> but to say true, I've no preferment yet that's suitable, suitable to the greatness of my person and my parts. I grant I live at ease, for I am made the master of the beds, the long acre of beds. But there's no <clears throat> marigolds that shuts and opens, flower gentles, Venus baths, apples of love, pinks, hyacinths, honeysuckles, daffodilies. There was a time I had more such drabs than beds. Now I have more beds than drabs. Yet there's no eminent trader deals in host wholesale, but she and I have clapped a bargain up, let in at Watergate, for which I've racked my tenants' purse strings that they've twanged again. And we have the entrance of the Black Bishop and the Black Knight. Yonder Black Knight, the fistula of Europe, whose disease once I undertook to cure with a high Holman halter, when he last vouchsafed to peep into my privileged longing lodgings. He saw good store of plate there and rich hangings. He knew I brought none to the White House with me. I have not lost the use of my profession since I turned White House Bishop. And re-enter the fat bishop's pawn with books. Look, more books yet. Yonder greasy term code, gormandizing prelate, doth work our house more mischief by his scripts, his fat and fulsome volumes, than the whole body of the adverse party. Oh, oh it, it were a uh, master... No, uh, yes. Black Bishop. Oh, that's me. Oh, it were a masterpiece of serpent subtlety to fetch him on this side again. And then damn him into the bag forever, or expose him against the adverse part, which he, now he feeds upon, and that would double damn him. My revenge hath prompted me already. I'll confound him on both sides for the physic he prescribed and the base surgeon he provided her for me. I'll tell thee what a most uncatholic jest he put upon me once when my pain tortured me. He told me he had found a present cure for me, which I grew proud on and observed him seriously. What do you think it was? Being execution day, he showed the hangman to me out at window. The common hangman! Insufferable. I'll make him the balloon ball of the churches, and both the sides shall toss him. He looks like one, a thing swelled up with mingled drink and urine, and will bound well from one side to another. Come, you shall write, our second bishop absent, with hath no yet no employment in the game. Perhaps nor ever shall. It may be one without his motion. It rests most in ours. He shall be flattered with sedent vacante. Make him believe he comes into his place. That will fetch him with a vengeance to us. For I know powder is not more ambitious when the match meets it than his mind for mounting as covetous and lecherous. No more now, sir. And indeed no more, because that's as far as we're going. The scene gets much more complicated in a moment because there's going to be the entrance of all sorts of pieces, which I'm going to have to figure out a plan for how we're doing that tomorrow. Um, it, it's really interesting. The fat bishop, who is basically just changes sides and uses the other side to argue against that side. He'd love Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, he's a television <laughs> presenter, um, just being a deliberate contrarian. Um, to sell his next book. Mm. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's such a modern figure in that sense. Um, and yet, obviously, th there's no love lost between him and the Black Bishop who um, and the Black Knight, uh, both of whom loathe him. Um, and he's, uh, shall we call it, the Caligula healthcare scheme here. Of, um, <laughs> he had a cough, so I chopped his head off. Um, <laughs> You're not feeling well, <laughs> sir. Ha, 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 this will cure all your ills. <laughs> um, that, and it, it, it seems to be a deliberate 
tonal shift as well to go to a yeah. different kind of venality of 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 gluttony rather than you know he's he's he had mm. sexual appetites he doesn't anymore because he can't really see any that far down it um, <laughs> um <laughs> and so it seems to be deliberately just switching the tone after what was a very very dark scene um but still keeping the 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 the, the what the play is doing and, uh, and and picking everything up a little bit more. Thoughts before, as we're now into extra time. Where does the fat bishop come from? What's the, I mean, how does that fit with the game of chess? Well, um, a lot of the characters that are not the pawns, but the important pieces are uh, more or less veiled references to real people. Mm. And so the fat bishop is, um, there's a specific person who right. is being, sort I of, figured that was the case. Is asserted. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, we're I can give you name and details, but I don't know if they matter. No, I mean, that's the thing. That, yeah, that yeah, there, there, there is, um, you know, there's an awful lot of background and detail which we would do in a different mm. context uh, in the future. I'm, I'm not uh, uh, I, at the moment. I'm trying to see what we get from it uh, here. Um, but it's just an extra bishop. It's yeah, not... he's. Oh yes, I mean the question is, he he, he was originally of the Black House. He is now putatively of the White House. Um, uh, but I think we can safely say his allegiance is not very firm anywhere. Um, uh, we've had hints of that from the Black uh, Queen's pawn, actually saying her only allegiance is to herself. She said that in an aside. Mm. And we've got a white pawn that is in the pay of the Black pieces. Mm. So we, even though we've got a Black and White setup. Some of the pieces aren't black or white. They're sort of that. That's just a clothing that they're wearing. It's sort of Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm. <laughs> um, well, that's one for the costume viewers, isn't it? <laughs> um, I mean, what what struck me in some ways is that the the tone and the the form and the um, wording in this sequence is quite radically different from what's gone before. Um. To my, the way it came across to me, um, and to a certain extent, the fat bishop it's, reminds me of a slightly later piece, the uh, Vicar of Bray. Mm. I, I mean, I, I, he does seem to be, he's on a much more openly comic vein. Yes. Um, mm. um, you know, that, that seems to be his function. Um, is is uh, slightly lighter relief from some of the other characters. Um, um, other thoughts about where we are? I mean, um, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about the, the the structural problem of Act One is actually that 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 opening. There's something that needs doing with that. A lot of work needs to be done on that. I don't feel that there's a structural problem with Act Two. Um, you know, maybe the odd cut here, and and certainly deciding on tone and what you're doing with it, and uh, and maybe some of the more obscure references get get adjusted, but it's it, it, at the moment my producer's hat is going. Act one is needs needs seeing uh, some scene work done on it. Um, but uh, how else? Uh, how are other people feeling about this play? I mean, you know, you, you, you're... well, just the as far as I'm concerned, the the character. Maybe it's just because gluttony might be my sin, but. Um... The fat bishop is my favorite so far. He's clear, he's open. I mean, he's, you know, yeah. he, he's a vile, but still he's, he's, he, he's wearing his heart on his sleeve. I mean, it's really, there's no... On his stomach, have you? I his <laughs> stomach on his sleeve, absolutely. <laughs> All over the table, but it's, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> still. What, and, what's really useful about him is he's got a proper introduction, which most other characters didn't have. You know, you mm. don't have anybody else explaining their motivations before they appear, which is, I think, one of the reasons why we had difficulties at the beginning of the play, because a lot of these things would have been contemporary references that people mm. don't need explaining because they would have got mm. them immediately. I, I'm, mm. not sure, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about that very opening with the, um, with the, 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 the Black Bishop's pawn and the White Queen's pawn. Um, the, uh, you know, because the game that's being played there of him sort of working her as, you know, as, as someone he's, he, uh, she, she's his, a mark that he's going to, to, to work upon. I, I'm, 
because it's already a lie what they're doing sort of already doing on stage i i i just wonder if that's not so much the audience would have got it then i i i feel that that opening gambit is a really dangerous bit of dramaturgy um well i don't know what be... the co i don't know if the context would have helped so um, it would be elucidated a bit by um Error's line in the um, in the preamble because Error identifies uh, Ignatius of Loyola asks, "Are any of my people involved in this?" And Error specifically points out those two, um, the the Black Queen's pawn and the Black Bishop's pawn, mm. as plotters and as on the side of evil. So from the very opening, we'd be going, "Hang on a second, what is it that they want to um, achieve?" Mm. But yeah. we would know whose side they're on, what they're um, kind of after, because they're part of this conspiracy uh, that, that Loyola explained at the beginning or ex asked about, and but so would, on. So would we'd we have... need to know more than that they are on opposing teams? Because, you know, one's black, one's white. Do we need to know more than that? We just need to highlight the point, that line, which I, I didn't take in um, from... from... Well, the question you asked was about was about the motivation, about what's going on and, and why. Yeah, and so, so the answer is at the it, it is, it is expressed beforehand. It's the religious conspiracy, and then yeah. we, you know, we get to the the um, attempted rape thing later on. But that's the the bishop's pawn serving himself as opposed to yeah. serving the greater conspiracy. Well, uh, well, or, or or at least interpreting his orders in in, in an excessive manner. Um, yeah. uh, it, it, you know, it's it is part of the plot, but it's not explicitly. To, he's not told to do it that way. Mm. Um, but yes, no, that that's just me not taking that in. You're right; they do explicitly say, uh, you know, look at them too. That there's something going on here, and that needs to be highlighted. And that's uh, the thing. I don't think that's you. I think that's just us as a modern audience. We would need a lot clearer signposting. Yeah. Yeah, but would would we, you know, if we rehearsed it and we place that forward, and you know, with the physicality of those people on stage, you know, would we get that? Is it this? Is this a problem of this room? Uh, is 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 not adequately taking us outside of the problem of reading it as a play um, mm. at the moment? Uh, that's 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 the point. Other thoughts, because I think we 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 might get bogged down in in, in, in that. Just on that same vein about what the audience is getting and what's being set up in that preamble at the beginning. And so I see that, you know, Error does say to Ignatius, why would you have them play against themselves? So that's setting up the idea that there can be turncoats, there can be people who are turning from black to white, but it will be quite hard to, sort of, you'd have to make that very pointed and quite how you'd, the, whether the audience would even remember that, I don't know. But, the, but it is there, the thought is planted. Yeah, I'm wondering whether we can do more physically with the entrance of the chess pieces. Is there a little dance that we have them do uh, to demonstrate the game that's going to be played? Um, like okay. a dumb show? Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, we've been doing dumb shows in Gorbadoc. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, let's uh, just uh, uh, go into final thoughts, I'm afraid, because we are running running out of time. Veronica, um, as, as someone who uh, ha hasn't said as much, but have been witnessing everything. Um, I'm internalizing a lot. <laughs> That's Probably not necessarily a good thing in this play. <laughs> session, I might be more outspoken, mm. maybe. But um, yeah, I don't know if this is my designer's brain switching on, but I think this, like, the set potential for this is really cool and is really interesting. Um, that might help also give more visual uh, cues and I, I don't know, but um, it, it, it's definitely a fascinating concept. Um, mm. um, yeah, I, I don't know um, about uh, the, modern audience <laughs> uh, dilemma um, because I did read that um, T.S. Eliot uh, references this play mm. um, in his Wasteland poems and I think oh. if the modernists could pick up on that surely mm. we're not that far off mm. from I, I, that time period. Yeah. 
I mean, the, I, the, I the, the, the reason I raised the question is just simply that it isn't done. And, you know, there are so many barriers to, to this play in terms of how do you read it? And we've already stumbled several times uh, over yeah. which part we're reading. And that's a structural problem with the script. It's not necessarily a problem with the dramaturgy. Um, no. Though we have tripped over some of the dramaturgy, um, certainly not fatally so, it just flags up the, the, the need to be clear at the opening of the play and mm. making sure that you're getting the narrative across um, is, a, is, a big, is a big thing. Um, and this thing is if, nobody's, if it's not being produced, we don't have that knowledge base to be, uh, to be able to warn the next production, this is where the trap lives. We're not, we're not shining light on traps because we're, we, we don't want the play to be done. We're shining light on them to say, mm. right, this is the bit you need to work on. You know, act two, scene one, uh, is, is more a question of how you w work a rehearsal room and not traumatise everyone. Um, but dramaturgically, there's nothing inherently worrying about that scene in terms of putting it on stage. Um, whereas act, act one is, is more, more of an issue. Uh, Liz, any, any last, last thoughts? No, first thoughts. I'm looking forward to tomorrow and carrying on with it. Excellent. It's, it's, uh, it's fascinating. Um, uh, William, any, any final thoughts before we close? Final thoughts, also looking forward to tomorrow, which I can Ooh, do. So yay. um looking yeah, forward to doing it. Excellent. Yeah. I, I make a note. I make a note. Helen, any final thoughts? I wish I'd read it before I started reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I really could have done better. Also, I should be wearing black. Yes, we should be colour coded, shouldn't we? <laughs> um... Hang on, uh, I'm a white bishop spawn and a black bishop. Yeah, hats. Really hats. We need hats. <laughs> silly, hat, silly hats with the, 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 the... I mean, that's that's the other problem. The, the obvious costuming points could make everyone look very silly. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, Ruth, any final thoughts? Well, I like it so much that I'm trying... I'm thinking I might try and clear some space so that I can... If you've got space, you know, tomorrow, it's tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow lunchtime. Yep. Tomorrow afternoon, rather, for you. For me, it's 8 a.m. But mm. uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, I'm actually quite keen to carry on doing this. Mm. Uh, well, we've got my favourite scene coming in, uh, in, in uh, tomorrow. So uh, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, if you can make it, more than welcome. Um, you know, the more the merrier, especially with the bit we're about to do, because there's a lot of bodies there. I will probably break that down into chunks uh, to make sure we can do it properly. Uh, I think we've been around pretty much everyone at least once. Everyone's had a bit of their fair say. Nobody de mm -hmm. desperate to say anything. Alan, I always forget. You're invisible. Yes, uh, deliberately so. Uh, I still don't, can't quite get my head around what's going on. I'm getting, it's becoming clearer, but um, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Yes. I think I think there's still a lot of exposition work needs to be done on the <coughs> eunuch, but um, we'll 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 come round to him later. Uh, and on if that, it, if it isn't just a load of balls, indeed. And on that, on that bombshell, um, <laughs> on that cheerful note, uh, we'll say goodbye to the game at chess uh, for this first session, and thank all the readers for all their work today. Bye. 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 Bye.